Hi, this is Solomon. Have you wondered why I'm called Solomon? Because I focus on concentrated solar power, and here's what I did. As Solomon, also I've invented quite a few things for you to cook on. Here is a Solomon grill. You can place a hot dog in the focus of this parabolic trough and will cook the hot dog quite well. Another thing which I used to cook the hot dog was I put a skewer onto the hot dog and put it inside one of the focal points of this ellipse. The equation of the ellipse is x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equal to 1. So you have the major axis here 5 inches uh, and 10 inches over here. And the minor axis here is 6 inches. Now if you place a hot dog in one of the focal point of the ellipse, basically here, the light and you put a light source on the other point here, all the light from the light heater source will be reflected onto your food here. So you can cook it quite well and very efficient. Now, obviously there's better use of solar trough than to cook a hot dog. Here is one of the predominant way solar power is used to generate electricity. They have a solar trough here, and then you pipe molten salt in the center in, along the uh, focal point of the trough and then it would heat it to about 500 degrees celsius and then you can use that to generate electricity using that to heat up water form steam and generate solar power by turning a steam turbine and then afterwards you use an electric generator to generate electricity now this is used a lot in arizona and it produces quite a bit of electricity, but one of the problems it has is that it will take quite a while at the beginning of the day before you collect enough sunshine to really uh, melt the salt and you can store the salt in the tank before it can be used to produce steam. Besides a parabolic trough, you can also use a par parabolic mirror to focus sunlight onto the focal point. In fact, this is how the Weber telescope can really focus onto a very far away region in the galaxy almost 13 billion years ago and then you, there's a, the light source over there is so faint that you need a very big surface area to collect the light and then concentrate the light onto the focal point. Now here's an example of a parabolic mirror. The equation for the surface of the parabolic mirror is x squared plus y squared, x in this direction, y in this direction, and c in the focal point direction. It's equal to 4f, f is the focal length of the parabolic surface, and 4fc. So you have a circular surface that is forming a paraboloid, and then you can focus sunlight onto the focal point. Here is an example for the Hubble telescope where the mirror diameter is about 2.4 meter and the focal point F is about 57.6 meters. So it has a very long, uh, it's very much a long telescope. And here you have the focal point is uh, equally long. Now, instead of using a parabolic surface to focus on a distant part of the galaxy, you can point that to the sun and concentrate solar power and use that concentrated heat energy 
to generate electricity. Now, I have here what I did about 10 years ago. I literally make a lotus flower that can fold up, and when it opens up, it can concentrate sunlight onto the focal point. And I pump water into the focal point, it turns it into steam, coming back down here to, ge uh, to generate motion by means of a steam engine. I was able to generate a few hundred watts of power from there. Not a lot, and so I was, I'm very determined to invent a new kind of heat engine that can really power that uh, electric generator very efficiently. Now here is also uh, a much larger uh, solar concentrated power by a company called Sterling Energy. They have a very state-of-the-art Sterling engine placed at the focal point and it can generate about 25 kilowatts of power. Pretty good, but the company folded because they couldn't find a power company to build a large number of such uh, solar concentrated power generators. I think solar energy is the answer to a lot of shortages we have in the world nowadays. What are the shortages? We are short of clean air, we are short of clean water, and we are short of clean energy. So I was inspired one time while I was visiting Tibet. I was at the Portala Palace in Lhasa, and I was visiting the town, and I all of a sudden heard a loud hissing sound, as if somebody was blowing steam off a boiler. Now, that actually was, came, was coming from a solar water heater. Now, you probably know that Tibet is very uh, high in altitude, at about 5,000 meters above the sea level. The water uh, would boil at about 80 degrees Celsius. And so the loud hissing sound comes from the fact that sunlight is concentrated in this vacuum tube for which water flows through there and it heats the water to almost boiling point even at the sea level and at the altitude of 5,000 meter they, they evaporated so a lot of the steam actually got collected in the uh, water tank above and it got released on the side and all of a sudden I was inspired to say hey this is the way to really desalinate seawater. You can have these solar water heater concentrating uh, sunlight onto the seawater in this vacuum tube, and therefore they evaporate, and then you can generate steam that way. Now, that's not very efficient, and I was determined to discover a much better way to concentrate solar power as well as to not only produce desalinated seawater, but also use that solar energy to generate power. Now, after many years of research, I invented this solar power desalination and power generation device. It's pretty big. You have a cone service, half a cone, and you have this solar power reflector that reflects sunlight from above onto a water column of seawater and you can evaporate the seawater in this column. Now this is the top-down view of these, uh, the device. The sun is ascended, it's coming down here and then it will reflect sunlight onto this water column here. Now this is inclined at a 40 de five degree elevation when the sun is at the zenith. So the amount of area uh, that this reflector can catch is this area that is enclosed here. And this is 20 meter in diameter. And this is uh, five meter. And so you can calculate this total area amounts to about 120 uh, square meter and that can allow you to generate quite a bit of uh, both power as well as desalinated seawater. Now the problem is the sun is not set in a fixed position like at the center position during the midday sun. Uh, it moves from east to west and also it's still south and noon time. So you need to have a reflector that rotates to track the sun in two uh, uh, axis. One is the 
azimuth location. So it starts pointing at the sun towards the east direction, and then it gradually turned to the south direction, and then to the west direction at sunset time. Now, during noon time, the sun is closer to the zenith, and therefore, not only that, at the beginning, the reflector has to point towards the eastern sun and reflect the, water, uh, reflect the sunlight onto this water column. At noon time, this is a 45 degree angle and reflects the sunlight directly onto the water column. And at night, you need to close it up so that it's not subject to wind forces. And uh, if it is very windy, you lay flat the, all the solar panel reflector uh, so that it will lie flat on the ground. Now the trick is, how do you really track the sun? And not only that, as, the, as uh, during the midday sun or when at night it closes up, how do you make the surface pretty much reflect sunlight onto the pole, as well as that the sectorized reflector is not going to collide with each other. And after much research, I came up to the idea that you should pull the, each of the solar reflector on the side so that very much like a lotus flower, it would come up, the, these tracking, uh, these axes would come up and then the reflector would fall behind each of the axes at the back side so that they don't collide with each other. And I, w I was very happy when I found the solution for that. Wow, this is wonderful. We can produce not just clean solar energy, but also we can produce desalinated water for the whole world. Now, a lot of people live by the sea. They lack energy. They also lack fresh water, as also they are in the danger of not being able to survive in the global warming environment. So we need air conditioning also. Uh, so what I plan to do would be to distribute these solar men in all, solar men in clean air, water, and energy to the whole world, to the poor people, so that they will be able to enjoy uh, clean, cool air, they will be able to enjoy fresh, chill water as well as clean energy. Until next time, I hope you would understand this is one of my most important inventions that will change the world.